Our back here at Trollspeile in the, well, Norwegian summer, as per usual. Uh, and we thought, uh, like we've said, that we wanted to do some in-hand work today. Uh, and uh, we have uh, managed to get a real treat, I think, for you. Uh, as we're going to show three horses work in hand, it's going to be quite normal work, just uh, what we would have done with these horses normally. Um, the first horse, this one, Mandarb, he's a Knabstrup, five-year-old stallion. He has not been worked much uh, dressage, if at all. Uh, he has not been ridden yet, but as I said, he's five years old. He's a big, strong lad, and he should be able and ready now, I think, to be ridden properly. Uh, ridden, to be trained properly, sorry. So, uh, what I've got today is a cavison on him. I have brought my stick, uh, and I have uh, also put on him a uh, lunging girth with some side reins. If I want to um, make sure he keeps his positioning while I'm working easier than just keeping the positioning with the cavison. So what I'm going to try and do <coughs> when we're done screaming is uh, just work him on a circle of sorts and then uh, see how he responds. And then I'll try and tell you what I see and what I try to expand on, what I try to improve, how I try to make the horse better by way of making him more flexible, more balanced, more collected if that when it comes to that. I don't think so today with this guy, but maybe with one of the later horses we'll, uh, we'll come to that as well. So this first guy, like I said, five years old, not much training at all. The second horse is uh, 21 years old. Uh, he's got a lot of training but uh, he's also had a lot of problems in, in his body and we'll see what has happened about that and we'll see, talk about uh, how to improve on that as the horse is right now. Uh, at the end, uh, we're hoping to treat you to a little bit of Piaf and, and see, uh, see how uh, a horse that's fairly okay trained, even though he's not at his very best at the moment, he's fairly okay trained, he's got a good Piaf going uh, at the best of his days and uh, we'll see if we can make that work for you as well. So we're going to start now with Mandarb, aren't we? Good boy. Oh, do you want to talk to everyone? Good boy. The first simple thing I do is just I walk a, a circle of sorts and I feel out whether I want that circle to be bigger or smaller depending on what, how the horse reacts to it. At the moment, I almost don't touch him here, just a little bit to make sure he doesn't run away from me. And he's a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say anxious maybe, but uh, he's a little bit um, interested in his environment. You can hear the other horses shouting for him and for each other out there somewhere. Come on, please. Good boy. So it's a little bit hard for him to keep his attention here with me. I try to keep his nose. Good boy. I try to keep his nose a little bit towards me, and I try to make him cross his hind legs. He seems to find that a little bit hard, especially when he wants to talk to the other horses. He finds that difficult. Good boy. You can also see that sometimes he changes his rhythm, so he sort of stands, stops with one leg and moves it like that. He's very responsive to my body or reactive at least, is not yet perfectly responsive. So my aids are the cavison and the stick obviously, but most of all it is how I move my own body. If I get in the horse's way, like here, good boy, we can move almost straight sideways, even though we have never tried that movement before because he, will, he already knows that he's not allowed to go through my body, obviously. Which every well-schooled horse should know. You're not allowed to walk through people, that's bad. Right, it, right it's bad. We're gonna learn that later, yeah? Mandarb is gonna be my, my jousting and fighting horse, so hopefully we're gonna learn how to move through people as well. Not quite yet, maybe. We're going to just walk the other way and do the same simple thing. Just a simple circle. I try to make his head loose from the neck a little bit. I try to make his neck bent. 
I try to make him cross his hind legs a little bit. He also crosses his front legs a little bit. I have to hold him a little because he's not very well schooled yet, as he shouldn't be. Yeah, good boy, come. It's a little bit more difficult to keep him sideways on this side. But I'm just moving him around. Carefully, calmly, trying to make him relax and pay attention to me. Come on, boy. Good boy. Oh, good boy. Maybe I can show you this. I don't know if it's possible with this horse, but I'm going to try and show you. Here's a fun little thing that you can do. When you're working in hand, it's possible to reach the horse much better than when you sit on top of the horse. So if I want to reach with the stick, I can use the stick for different things with the horse here on the ground. And the first thing I would ask is just move. That's what we've seen already. I just keep the stick out and move it towards him and he moves because he doesn't want to touch that thing. That looks scary, right? So what I want to try and do now, I want to try and see if I can make him relax to this thing. So, so much so that I can touch him on different spots on his hind leg. I'm not sure if that's going to be possible because this is a, a thing I've never done with this horse. I suspect it has never been done with him at all by anyone. But if I can manage to do that now, we will be able to show something that's really worth something for you guys out there. First, we need to make sure that he understands that this is completely not dangerous whatsoever. So we don't use the stick to beat the horse. We use the stick to show the horse what we want to do. And I'm going to touch him now somewhere down um, the lower part of the leg. Just touch it. Good boy. Lucky number one, I guess. I don't know. But the first thing is, if you touch the leg far, fairly far down, the horse will often lift the leg away from that touch. And if we can use that idea that the horse lifts its leg away from the touch, we can keep adding difficult things to that. So if I were to touch the horse just behind the knee, the stifle, with the same, with the same idea, I would make the stifle move away from the stick instead. And also if I put the stick on top of his bum, I could make that move away from the stick as well. So I can do different things with just that one little thing. And as you see, we only need a touch. Good boy, good boy. And let him go. We're gonna ask him to walk. Good, come, good, come, good boy. And then I'm gonna touch him when I come around again. I'm gonna try and show it to the camera. I'm gonna touch him right behind the knee, just before the, oh, before the leg hits the ground. Good boy. A very sensitive boy, yeah? So we made him bend the knee more. If I can time that correctly, that means the horse will land with a bent knee. And that means that leg will carry some weight in its, in, in its musculature, instead of just straightening the leg and carrying itself on the, on the skeleton, as it were. So, good boy. Now, that was scary, yeah? No, it wasn't all that scary. But I would like to keep that sensitivity, so I'm not gonna touch him again until I really want him to change. So now he's already moving fine. A little bit more active now, yeah. A little bit more active, yeah. Good boy, come. Yeah. Good. So we're just waiting for him to relax completely again. Good. And I ask him to the inside a little bit and sometimes down a little bit and relax again. So I'm not holding his head in a position, but I'm asking again and again for him to release his head in that position. I want him to carry himself, which he of course does, but he's not carrying himself properly yet. Not the way I want him to. I want him to lift his back more. I want him to carry more behind. Of course, some of these things that I want him to do won't be done until like five years from now, I guess. <laughs> but I still want it. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Yes. So we'll see, oh, 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 this is a very scary stick, it's a very scary stick. Good boy, good boy. Make him folly. Come and stand. Good boy, good boy. 
So I would like to touch him on top of the bum too, but I think it's too much for him. He looks like he's gonna, he, he's already a little bit tense from that. So I'm gonna just step it down and let him be calm and relaxed and not ask more from him than can be expected when the horse is completely new in the training. Yes, because, because um, the horse is quite new to us. He's yes. been here like for two for days or something like that. Uh, it's more now, I think it's a four now more. maybe, but anyway. But not a week. Not a week, but no. no. And and he's been trained uh, in his old home. Yep. But, but just um, you know, he's, some he's a very, horsemanship trained more yes, or less. And he's, a very he's been told to horse. walk on top of this thing and don't be afraid of that thing and yes. follow your leader and do your things. So he's fairly he's nicely trained, yep. but he's not been um, schooled or yes. gymnasticized yes. the way we think about gymnasticizing yeah. and schooling a horse. And so it's a very, it's very nice thought that you don't want to, to train him too much in the beginning because you want it to become like, to be like fun for him and interesting. Yep. Now, however, I know that he's an intelligent boy. So I'm going to take him over here to the fence. And we're going to talk about whether the fence is dangerous or not. Or not. Is it dangerous, do you think? Now yeah, that one. Oh no, that's not dangerous, that's lunch. <laughs> no, no lunch now, you get your lunch afterwards, or well, even supper, I guess. So I'm gonna ask him to move again. You can see now, I'm standing almost straight in front of him now. And I'm gonna ask that hind leg to move forward. I'm going to have to be very careful where I place my body now, because I can push him so much that he can find no other way out than to go over me. So I have to be very awake when I do this, and especially if you have a fence on the outside, and especially if you don't know the sole of your horse very well yet. Can you please move this leg? Oh, it's difficult, huh? Can you move this one? Good boy, good boy. Just that one. So I know that he is so sensitive and timid, so he will always keep his distance to me. Even when it's difficult circumstances around him, he has shown already that he wants to keep his distance. So I was fairly certain it gonna, was going to happen this way. I'm going to ask for the same leg once more. Because I want that leg to move first, that inside hind, the one that's nearer to you. And I want this leg to move next, the inside front. And then what, how I'm going to do that, I'm going to try and feel if he's fairly loose in the top line. Then I'm going to ask him to move that leg, and then hopefully he moves this front leg by his own volition. But if not, I will touch the front leg with the stick as well. So I move a little bit out of his way, and I say, can you move this? And then this. Oh, that was difficult. This and this. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. So he moved away from me and the stick first, and that's quite all right. That's almost what I wanted, so I, I'm not going to correct him for that or anything of that, that sort. What I'm going to do is just keep asking him to move in a way that is well for the horse to move. Well, a way that is healthy for the horse. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to ask this hind leg to move and it's, yeah, good boy. Good boy. Can you do it again? Good boy. Are we going to play just a little bit? Can you do it? Good boy. Come. Good boy. That's a nice boy. And he's already engaging pretty well behind, I think, in my opinion. Even if we have just touched him, what, six times? Something like that. And I believe it is possible to see that it's not much of a touch. Not all horses will be this responsive, by the way. So just so you understand that if you just find a five-year-old stallion lying around somewhere and he hasn't been trained, Maybe you shouldn't expect this kind of behavior. <laughs> you need to have a horse that's at least very, very comfortable with working with people before you can do this stuff. Maybe I can do it without, but you're not allowed. Oh well, you do what you like, okay? Good, but I'm not recommending asking a young horse, young stallion to do difficult things. Good boy, good boy, yeah. Good boy, come, good boy, yes, come. Yes, such a good boy, yeah. But I don't rec recommend to work a young stallion in any way that you don't feel is very safe for you. 
all right so I'm feeling already that I have had a lot of good stuff out of him in this very short training session I am not going to put on him any side reins or anything like that I don't think that's necessary he's done really well so far we even saw that he tried to tuck his butt under a little bit and bring his hind legs forward a little bit with some bend in all the joints. That's really good. Now, I have to say, I expect him to have rather a steep learning curve. He's intelligent, he is well muscled, strong, he's sensitive, and he's a cute guy, and he wants to do good jobs. So I expect him to have a steep learning curve. Also, he's five years old already, so his joints, his ligaments and his tendons are already well developed. And that, that's why I dare to ask him a lot, even, even on TV or even on camera live like that. So what I think we're going to do now is just switch this horse for another one. I'm not going to switch him, but we're going to change him for another horse. Uh, so maybe you, Hone, could take over this guy and bring him somewhere where we don't bring the two war horses together too tight for this first time. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I'll just go here, perhaps. And I would love to have Prumik brought here. Hello, you big ship, you. Thank you. Good boy. All right, I'll turn him around so you don't have to look at his butt all the time. Come on, boy. Come on. All right, so this guy is a little bit different. This guy is Prumik. He's uh, been my jousting horse for quite a few years. Uh, he's an elderly chap by now, don't, uh, but just don't tell him, because as you see, his ears goes back immediately. He doesn't like that. Uh, he, don't, he doesn't think he's old yet. So this guy is strong, like he's built strong, but there are many things in this horse's training that isn't up to the level we would expect from a horse that's 21 years old and has his career behind him, sort of. However, he's moving better every year, still. So, uh, we have no idea, maybe he'll be 40 years old, who knows? We can pray or hope. Uh, but this guy, he's gonna show us um, a little bit more difficult stuff. Uh, he's probably also going to be more precise with a lot of the stuff that he does, but I'm still gonna start him the same way. He has not been warmed up now, he's been ridden earlier today. Um, just calmly a while ago now. I can't, I am not sure if it's like two or three, four hours and something like that, it doesn't matter. So what we're gonna do is just start him the same way, turn around on the circle and see what happens. That's what I like to do. There are flies here, as you see. Come on, boy. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. As you see, Prumik has a rather a long body. His back is really long. So it's quite difficult for him to unload his front end by way of his hind end. Luckily, he's been pretty heavy in the shoulder all his life, so he's strong enough to keep it up. But this guy has had lots of ailments in his body. So much so that even his uh, digestion has been a bit off. Good boy. There's not much more we can do at this point than keep training him as well as we can and better and better. That's what we're aiming for. So what I'm looking at now is I'm looking how he's moving his hind legs, which is quite all right for him. You can see that the musculature here on top of his butt is moving. You can see it kind of go, uh, go slack and say blah, 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 every time he lifts his leg back up. And that's something I'm looking for, especially on this horse. I am looking for, I'll show you when, you when I turn the boat around. Oh, good boy, come on. Nah, come on. What, is it the wrong place? Oh, it was in the wrong place. I'm looking for this area here. We'll turn around again. Looking for him to become active in this area here. And you can see that the musculature there is 
blobbing around for every stride, which means something is going on there at least. Up until fairly recently, I'd say maybe even just weeks ago, this musculature that we were showing, this here, didn't move at all. It looked like cardboard, like not moving at all. So that's the thing that he's improved on lately, even if he is two and a half years old. Okay, 21 or something. Do the same thing the other way. I just walk with the horse. Now, I sort of forget what I'm doing when, I'm, when I do this stuff because I do it on uh, automatic. So my, my body just does it. But I'm still moving relatively perf perfectly. No, I'm trying to stay at the same position in relation to the horse's shoulder all the time. But also, I'm trying to make him stay in the same position in relation to my chest all the time. It's just as much that thing. So you have to do both ways, just as we have described in riding. You have to make sure that the horse moves with you at least as much as you move with the horse. If the horse moves with you, you're the leader. If you move with the horse, the horse is the leader. Well, that particular movement at all, at least. All right, good boy. So we have just now walked around a little bit, made him cross his legs a little bit to see if there's anything that he protests against, which there isn't at the moment. So in order for, for him to, to get some proper training, uh, i.e. make him work so hard that his musculature will actually get stronger, we will have to ask him something quite different than just walking around on the circle. So with a horse like this that has been trained for many, many years, we will do completely different things to what we did with the young horse. Not in, not with regards to um, what we do, but how much we do. So if you want to make your horse stronger, you will have to m work his musculature so hard that it actually makes a difference. And to make a difference in this old boy is going to take some work. So I'm going to bring him with me over to the fence and I'm going to ask him to do things that he thinks is difficult. So bear with me. Come on, boy. Come. Come, please. Come. Good boy. Good boy. So with this horse, as you see, I am using a regular... Um, what do you call it? Sorry. What's the word for this stuff? Cavison? No. A bridle? A regular bridle, thank you yeah. very much. <laughs> the word ex escaped me. Uh, with a regular bridoon and a, and a kandar. What do you call that? A uh, curb. A curb bit. So he's got both bits, but what I'm using mostly is this inside bridle, the bridoon, and I'm trying to make him position his head. And he thinks that's difficult. He wants to bend instead if he wants to do anything at all. So he wants to bend his whole neck instead of just positioning the head. So I'm testing whether he's, yes, good boy, positioning his head. And when he is, I'm going to ask him to step up a little bit. Good boy, come. Oh, it's difficult, eh? Good boy. Again. And come. Good boy, come. That's it. Uh oh, it's okay. You can do it. Good boy. Good boy. All right. So, the level of his training at the moment is such that he's, he comes into a school halt somewhat when he tries to collect himself, which isn't bad at all. You're really elegant, aren't you, today? Come on. Or every day, really, but. Only today on, on film. Come on, boy. We're going to try again. So you will see when I ask him to collect himself a little bit again. Still, I'm using my body to say, stay here. I'm not using my bit to say, stay here. The bit is used for quite different stuff, like positioning. Um, 
and I'm trying to position him just slightly to the inside so that he's fairly loose up here because that allows the energy to come forward. But what, I, what he will do when I ask him to collect a little bit more, you will see that he sort of sits back. He doesn't move forward like that, but he sits back into his muscles in his butt and his hamstrings. We're going to have a look and see if I can, if I can show it with him or if he will say, no, I don't want to show. Come on, boy. Yeah, yeah. Almost. Good boy, come. Good boy, come. All right, so you can see that he sits back into his hindquarters, but he doesn't use them to lift up and forward as of yet. So the next step we would be looking for is for him to actually use that power to lift himself forward without inverting his whole top line so that his nose goes straight in the air like that, right? That, that's what we would look for next. I don't expect I can do that, but might be able. So I'm going to try a few times, see if I can make him move forward. But he thinks it's exceedingly difficult to do so. So if he doesn't, you'll have to excuse us. That's the level of our training at the moment. But I thought it would be good to see that idea. All right. Come. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Oh, good boy. Come. Ah, ah. Oh, so. Good boy, come, come, come. Good boy, come, come, come. Oh, it's very difficult, huh? Good boy, you're doing great. Good boy. We're gonna turn around and see if we can try the other way. So he's trying to move forward a little bit, but he's not got very much success in moving forward correctly yet. He sits down really well, but he doesn't want to lift through his top line. And as if you look at how he's built, you can see that his top line lacks a bit of, lacks a little bit to be desired. Let's say it that way. So there's still like, we would have loved for it to be a much fatter chunk of muscle here. And also that, yeah? and also up here, we would like to have much more muscle than this old guy has. But that's all right. That's what we're working on. And we're gonna keep working on it. And what's happening then is that as long as he has improvement in his movement, he feels better every day. I feel the same. If I have improvement in the way I move every day, well, I feel better and younger every day. Even, well, even if it isn't true. I don't want to talk about that anymore. <laughs> Good boy, come. Good boy. Good boy, come. You can see that sometimes I tickle him here to make him engage maybe his abs a little bit if he can. He doesn't enjoy that a lot, but... And then I ask him on top here to sit down a little bit. Good, and then we ask to move, oh, come on, forward. Good boy, come. Good boy, come. Good boy. Yes, come, 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 come. Yes. Oh, that was really difficult, right? Eh? So, he managed to move forward, even with a little bit of collection. Yes? Yeah, good. I don't wanna be saying stuff that isn't true. Good boy. We're gonna try a few more times. As you see, we're not asking in any rough way at all. This horse has respect and is relaxed when we work with him. When he isn't relaxed at the moment, it isn't because of the aids that are implied. Applied, sorry. It isn't because of the aids that we apply. It is because he thinks it's hard to do the movement. And if you look at it, you can see it. You can see it afterwards if you like to run the, run the video again. You can see that the horse will try to do a difficult movement and then he thinks that's so hard that he does, says, no, nah, that was really difficult. Good boy, come. Good boy. Good. Good. Come, come, come. Oh, you can do it. You can. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy, come on. Yes, good boy. Oh, 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 good boy. Good, come. Yes, yes, good boy. Good boy. Oh, that was a nice boy. He did really well. I hope that was really, really visible for everyone. He tried to move forward with his hind legs connected underneath him. And he did really well, I think. Right. 
So, so far, I don't think I've touched the curb at all. I've touched the inside rein some slight times. And now I even touched his nose because he wanted to push me. Can I? Are you? <laughs> you oh, he's, take, he's replacing you. I'm sorry. Him too. Come on. We're going to try one more time this way as well. I enjoy or like my preference is to do things both ways with the horses. That doesn't mean that I always do it. But with a horse like this one, an old fighter like this, it isn't too much to ask him to do the difficult thing twice. He can do that. What we're going to try and do with some other horses, some horses are um, uh, the youngster. I wouldn't have asked the same thing both ways if he did really well one way. I would have just said, that's all right, you did great, and I would have finished it there. But with this old hair fighter who can train all day long and not be tired by it, I have no bad conscience at all asking him to do the same thing twice. Good boy. Because he knows what he's supposed to do. He knows that I am fond of him. Good boy. Good boy. Come, 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 come. Even if I ask difficult stuff. Good boy. Come. Good boy. Come. Yes. Come, come. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah, there we go, there we go, running away just a little, but still tried to keep his hind legs much more connected than he, than he normally does, and than he, than he does now when I let him go, as you see, he's just flumping about. All right, so that's what I wanted to show with this horse. I would have kept this training up quite a while with this guy, because he's strong already, and he needs to be trained pretty hard to become even stronger. So I would do this several times, and like we've shown now, I would take breaks like I do here. When I talk to you, I would talk to my students, or I would just generally talk, which is what I do. Uh, or, or just hang around and listen to music or something. But I would go back to it and ask again, and I would go back and ask again, and I would go back and ask again, and even ask more stuff sometimes. Um, no. We're not going to do anything more with this guy. So I'm going to let him out now. And we're going to bring in, bring in the last horse of the day, which is Ares. Ares has a bit of an ill shoulder. So we're working him carefully, carefully, and trying to the best of our abilities, thank you very much, to ask him to sit properly behind. No. So Ares is a little bit full of himself these days because uh, he was visited by a mare the other day, which was very exciting, he thought. Is there something there? Oh, there's a camera. You think it's dangerous? Somebody has done something in the corner as well, eh? Horrible people. Horrible people come here, film and do stuff at my place like that. All right, so I'm just testing whether he can move sideways nicely, which he can. And then I will do the same thing the other way. And this will be, I hope, pretty quick, this here little session with him. I'm not just going to try and show what I would do with a horse that is even better trained than the last one. Good boy, come. Good. Come, 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 come. Come on, boy. Good boy. Come, come, this one. Come. Oh, 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 come. Good boy. Good boy, come. Move. Yeah, move forward. You can do it. Oh, yeah? You stiff? No, 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 no running away. That's not allowed. Not allowed to run away. Good boy. This here is a proper big boy stallion, so you need to be fairly firm with him. It's difficult to it's difficult to ask this horse to express all his power without expressing some power yourself somehow. Like I did now, I had to run in in front of him and say, "No, you're not allowed to run me over." And then I had to push him back, right? Come on, boy. Yeah, come. 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 Come, move, yeah.
Good boy, come. So Otis is so strong and so flexible that it's fairly easy for him to show a, a usable piaf even without any warm-up. You saw me warm up for what, eight seconds on each hand or something like that, I guess. And he can already move in straight into a fairly advanced movement. Uh, with, in that regard, I want to talk about one more thing about the piaf, which is somewhat maybe misunderstood in, in some, in some, by some maybe, I don't know, doesn't matter. The piaf as such isn't extremely heavy for the horse to do. It places great demands on flexibility to get into the proper position to do a proper piaf. But once you can get into that position, it isn't all that hard. So then the question becomes, why then do we use it? Well, we use it a lot to make the horse find his diagonals in a quite a short outline. We use it a lot to uh, improve strength in areas. And also, we use it so that if we make the horse sit down a bit more, I don't know if I can do it yet, but I'll try. Come, come. Good boy, come, 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 come. Come on. Good boy. Good boy, come. Yes. Come, come. Uh, uh, uh. Good boy, come. Yes, come on. Yeah, good boy. Oh, you relax a bit more, okay. So we see now that when I ask him to use his hind legs more, he sometimes bumps up a little bit and kicks out a little bit, which is quite fine with me. I don't care much about that. That's fine for me. So, we're gonna try again. You ready? Are you ready, big boy? Let's see. Let's see what you can do. Come on, here we go. Good boy, come. Good boy, come. There we are. Yes. So, when he sits down a little bit more, like now, oops, we can see that the musculature works much, much harder. So now the piaf is hard work. It's like if I were to squat without any weights, I can do that a fair, fair, fair few, oh well, not maybe very many, but a fair few times before I run out of power. But if I were to put 150 kilos on my shoulders, I would run out of power really quickly, which is the same thing that happens with the horse. There are degrees of collection, and you've already seen that the piaf isn't necessarily completely collected. So we have seen that the horse can be less or more collected at something that is good boy. Resembling a piaf. Come on. No, no, no. Here you go. Good boy. Come. Yeah, that's it. Good boy. Come. Yeah, that's it. Good boy. Good boy. Come. Mm -mm -mm. No, 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 no. Yeah, I know he's there. Now there's a stallion here too, and we need to beat him up. No, we don't need to beat him up. You're not allowed to beat up other horses. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. So we just do the same thing again. We can see that each time he's done that, a little jump of his, his back becomes looser all the way. Good boy. And it becomes looser and more relaxed as we pee off. He does not become tenser. He's not sweaty. He's not working so hard that it's not nice for him. And he really wants to stretch his top line. Also, maybe he really wants to smell if there's been any mare over here or maybe a stallion or, well, you know, 
something that you could either, well, trick into having intercourse with, or you can beat something up. That would be the fun things for him to do. So the reason I train this horse like this now is twofold, to put it very simply. One is, he's already strong and well-developed. The second is, he has a shoulder and a knee that doesn't do their job properly. And I try to keep the weight off that as much as possible while still training. And this is a, a very important point. If you train with heavy weights, if you or me were to train with heavy weights, the body will produce a lot, lot of growth hormone. And growth hormones, well, they're used for, you know, doping for as performance enhancing drugs, all that sort of stuff. But what we're talking about here is of course what the body makes by itself. And when you train hard, the body produces more growth hormone. Growth hormone will make your muscles grow stronger when you've trained them really hard, but it will also make repair every other little ailment in your body. So what I'm trying to do is ask him to produce a bit of growth hormone so maybe that can help him repair the things that aren't working the way they should. Are you impatient? Yes? Should we work more? Come on, do it. Come on, come on, come on. As you see, I have used only the cavus on here. There's no side reins, no nothing, no bit, no nothing like that. I can use that and I like to use that. But at the moment, I don't need it with him, so I don't at the moment. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. Come on, Sean. Sean. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh, is there something stuck in your nose? What's stuck in your nose? What's stuck in the nose? I can hear it. Yeah? I can hear it. Come on. Again. Again. Good boy. Good boy. Good, good, good. Come, come, come. Come. Yeah. Come. Let's show him. Let's show. Let's see. Let's see what you can do. Let's see, come, come. Yeah, yeah, there we go. There we go, ah, 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 don't go away. Don't go away. Don't go away, stay here. Yeah, good boy, come, again. I can bend his knees more. Good boy, come. Like I said with the black one. Good boy, I can bring his hind legs under. Good boy, come. Oh, come. Come. Ah, ah, ah. come. Good boy, come. Good boy. And even after that, which was fairly energetic, I'd say, he's still as calm as a breeze. Good boy. So, I don't think I'm going to show anything more than that today. We've shown in-hand work from just working on a circle until something that's past the piaf. Um, as you see, the same things apply all the time. You can use different equipment. Here you see a cabison and just a regular lead rope. Uh, I use a stick so I can point at things and touch things on the horse. Um, the different points you can touch here to make the horse move the leg forward, here to bend the knee, here to sit down, should be fairly obvious to see I think. And all those can be done on any horse. Uh, most horses will respond that way if they aren't taught something else. But of course if you have a horse that someone else has owned you have no idea what they've been taught. So. Try it out, but be careful. If you're touching the horse's hind legs, I want you to not stand in their way, okay? Um, yeah, uh, we used a regular bridle where we only used the inside bradoon, I think. Um, yeah, well, there seems to not be much to it. The point is, where do you place your body and how much energy can you absorb or uh, what should I call it? How much energy can you accept from your horse? Right, then any questions? Yes, there is a question Yeah. from Stine Kristiansen. Yeah. Can I use just a snaffle? 
You can use just a snaffle. That's not a problem at all. Just like I was saying when I was using when I when the, the white horse had a full bridle on. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Good boy. Don't do it. Uh, when he was in a full bridle, I used the snaffle only. It was the only thing I touched. Is it so annoying with those stupid insects? Let's pee off a little bit more then. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Come. And we're done. Good boy. All right. So having trained the horse in all sorts of ways, I'm going to say to you guys, good night. Thank you for today.